Good morning and good day, everyone, and welcome to our very first podcast of Asking for Life. My name is Dana Ben-Halim. I am a mom of three, a wife, a teacher, a business owner, and oh my goodness, so many different things. But aren't we all? And I'm very excited today to introduce you to uh, my teacher and my friend, King Gabriel, who I embarked on an adventure with uh, about a couple of years now ago. And the spiritual healing has been a life-changing experience. So good morning and good day, King Gabriel. Good morning, Dana. It is such a pleasure to be here. And it's such a pleasure to be in contact with you all. Today is a great day. It's the beginning of a wonderful celebration, I would say. And I'm so, so happy to be a part of it. That's fantastic, King. And just um, just so the audience knows, this is going to be, this came about because of our amazing conversations together about life and my questions to you. And um, just, in, just is so excited as well to be able to share this information with the world um, and people of all ages, genders, and and. To, to, to allow them to enjoy um, this knowledge. So I'm just going to give a quick introduction of your experience, King, um, uh, to the audience. Uh, the King is um, an authentic spiritual transformer um, and one goal of maintaining awareness of oneness with the Creator by assisting others in attaining absolute realization. Um, King is a spiritual transformer, certified Reiki master, a Qigong practitioner, and an electrical engineer, um, musician, published author, professional athlete and coach in multiple sports. And he has lived in with a memory of his unity with the creator. Um, I've, I've also read King's incredible book, um, God as Me. And uh, he's, he's also created and utilized and shared many amazing tools and practices that have shifted the minds of his communities in ways that are easily applicable uh, and very understandable. And I think, King, this is a great way to start off because this really resonates with me. Mm -hmm. um, the way when our conversations, we really, um, I really just understand the way you, you speak. And I feel that your authenticity just really comes through. So I'm, I'm so grateful to be able to do this today. Um, we're starting with a, a really great topic um, as well. And and I think it's gonna I think it's gonna really hit home with a lot of um, with a lot of people. Um, we're starting with like the how uh, the present and the past and the future. So I'm I'm really excited to talk about this, King. Oh, I'm so excited, also, Dana. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. And I just wanted to say that I'm really really grateful to you in particular because you've been a very open and receptive person. Your mind is amazing. And you translate things that are complex terms into such simple terms for everybody to understand. And so I just wanted to notice you for that or to recognize you for that because you're an awesome being. And it's great to be on this program with you right now, us working together doing this. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is fantastic. And, and I'm glad that you touched upon that, King, because before we get started with your with you know your coaching and your conversation um i really i you know i've talked to a few friends and it's it's so hard sometimes to get you know to really take in um perspectives of of different human beings you know sometimes we're really set in our ways and we it's hard for us to be open so i kind of i kind of tell my friends when uh you know, we, we have conversations or even in my coaching when I was doing with businesses is, is I start off by saying, you know, you need to put your, your, your thoughts on pause mm -hmm. so you can just kind of really be open to the conversation that's about to unfold. Lovely. You know, how would you say what is a mindset before we get started on what what kind of a mindset, um, you know, somebody uh, could could consider to, 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 you know, to be open to, you know, different ideas and views of life. I love that. Now, open-mindedness itself is one of the key concepts, I would say, to being able to learn really and to learn truly, right? The closed mind usually would 
shut things out, not ask questions, just they think that everything is this way it is, it is, it is. And yes, things are, but there's also room for growth or else there would not be change at all. And there is change. So the closed mind is a mind that won't learn. The mind that is completely skeptical, however, will also not learn. That would be more of a closed mind as well. So we want to get into that space of open-mindedness where, yes, we're questioning, like, because we want our experience to validate things for us. We don't want people to validate things for us. We want our experience to validate things for us. So we stay in a question and state yes, but not so stern that we're totally blocking any new information out, right? The last thing the ego ever wants is change, right? Because it identifies change as something that would corrupt itself or make it have to disappear. And we need to be able to change in order to learn. We actually learn through experience. And so it's important that we are open to change, open to new information, just open-minded. Questioning, but open-minded. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, I love that. So I'm really, um, I'm, I'm kind of bringing forward to the audience that, you know, to consider um, before we get started in every session that we do, um, to have that beautiful open mind and to just carry it, um, you know, through the conversation and see what experience arises um, as these as these topics unfold. So that's that's really cool. And so we're going to go ahead and get started having said that, King, with um with this topic that you and I actually, you know, again, had a conversation about and uh, it's about, you know, what's happening in the present moment. And I'm a mom of three and I I really had a great conversation with my 13 year old daughter about this. Mm -hmm. Um, She's really hard on herself um, and, and feeling so, especially with like certain subjects in school that she can't do it. Mm -hmm. And I learned this from you that, you know, whatever happened, whatever is happening right at this moment, because you've, all, you've taught me that there's no such thing as the present moment. Like we can't hold the present at all. Like right now it's like, Oh, it's gone. It's gone again. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, you can't grasp it. Right. Yeah. But if you really think about everything in this moment is happening as a result of the past. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, and she said, yeah, that's true. And I said, like, you know, we, we've recently moved countries, you know, and, and the reason we've moved is because, you know, my husband and I had a conversation in the past and it's, mm-hmm. it's completely happening yeah. um, right now. Mm-hmm. So, but, but she had a question for me and I think it's a great question is, um, okay, so if things happen as a result of the past, how much time is there? Like, what's the grace period? You know, like, why do some things happen instantaneously while other things take forever? And it's like, well, okay. And and sometimes they even unfold at a time where you don't even want it anymore, right? So what, why is that? That is a wonderful question. And in order to understand it, we actually have to come up out of the idea of time for a bit which is really strange because we're dealing with time, past, present, future, but we need to come out of time to understand it, which is funny. But in reality, there's only eternity. And I'm using a word here that's sort of spiritual. But when I say eternity, we see a timeline as past, present, future. And we decide that our past is what conditions us. And in that conditioning, that then brings our future into what it will be because the way that we react to life or the way that we act in life then brings about the future. What I'm saying though, is that if we view it from the standpoint of a continuous stream, eternity, outside of time, what happens then is that by acquiring a specific state within ourselves, and when I say a state, what I mean is everything is us. So if we are in a specific state, our experience will have to match that state. Therefore, whatever brings us to that state provides the condition for us to experience that state. So what we call our past is really just a form of conditioning our minds to acquire a specific state. And in acquiring that state, we have that specific experience. If then, Mm. all right, good. So if then we are to allow ourselves to go into the state that we desire beforehand or not think, even if we forgot that there was a past, but we were able to acquire that state, then that state would bring about the conditions that match that state. 
Therefore, we would be all. Wow, that's yeah, that's beautiful. Sorry to interrupt you there. Um, yeah. That's that's so different, King, because yeah. Yeah. you know it's it's very similar to what I've learned about you know being, sense of being, and having, and and getting right. Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of people that I've spoken to really believe that you know, well, if I had a certain you yeah. know, like a car that I wanted to drive, or if I had this job that I wanted, or if I, you know, was just a little bit of a, you know, um, a better income financially level, you know, um, yeah. then then I would be at a better state. But what you're saying is that we actually need to live the state yes. in, in every aspect, like believe it, feel it, uh, and then the experiences will just um, instantaneously just just happen maybe yes. not instant like instantly but they'll just happen they will happen yes and i love that you you brought this back up in a you this is brilliant um what you just said was why is it that some things happen quicker than others you asked mm -hmm. that in there right and i heard that in your question as well i want to get to that right now as well the only thing that makes the time seem different to us is our ability to fully get into that state. If we're really mm. lost in that state, like we are all up in it, we're feeling it, where everything around us is telling, is telling us that that's happening, then it is then, it is then, it is in that moment. But if we're doubtful and we're having questions about it and we're wondering, well, how we're gonna get this done and how we're gonna get that done, then we put that state a little further from ourselves. So then we experience time because we create a distance in our mind from the state. Yeah. Right. And I'll tell you, King, I, I believe, you know, my daughter at that moment, yeah. her state was fear, you know, and I, I could, I could sense it because, you know, we're, we're energy, aren't we? You know, we can, we can yeah. feel each other yeah. and uh, especially those people we're connected to and we love. Uh -huh. um, and so the state that she was really adamant to hold on to was was her fear of yeah. of the subject and and i could see it in her eyes so um what advice would you give you know my daughter or or if anybody who would be feeling you know this sense of fear low self-esteem or or just um you know confusion how do we what is the best method we can come out of that state we could use to come out of that state Okay, well, I love this. I, I have a little acronym like many other people do for FAIR, and my acronym for it is Focusing Energy on Alternate Realities. Now, what I mean by that is FAIR itself channels our energy in a different direction than we actually would want it to go to. That's what FAIR really does. So then if you're in a fearful state, it's because you're focusing on an alternate reality or you're focusing on something that is not what you want in that instance. And so it creates mm -hmm. this sense of anxiety, this sense of, well, whoa, I don't know if I could make it. Even though you know you're headed towards your goal, you're still feeling like you could lose or something could go wrong and all of this stuff. And that is where the energy gets channeled. It's not getting channeled towards your goal because in your vision, in your mind, you're seeing the failure instead of the success. And so that is what really takes control of the mind with fear. Now, the way out of that is to remember, firstly, who you are, because that's the first thing you need to know in that instant. If you know that you are everything, you are the outcome, you are the past, present, future, you are whatever you allow your mind to go to in that instant, right? If you can get to that and know that you are, in a sense, the source of the outcome, then the fear need not be there because you can reframe your mind, say, you know what? This fear, it is my responsibility. It's no one else's mm -hmm. responsibility, it's mine. Let me take care of it. You forget about it and put the energy towards what you want. In your mind, you visualize the outcome happening. You realize that it has happened already and step fully into that. And then all of a sudden you start feeling secure because with that same imagination, you're now seeing the success happen. You're seeing the people shaking your hand, feeling good, giving you hugs. People saying, I knew you could do it. That's so awesome. I knew you could do this. I'm so proud of you. Whoever it is that's there that you know would be there with you in the case that it happened, that's where you want to be. That's the state you want to acquire. And when you acquire that state, the other state falls away 
because both of them cannot occupy the same space. So if you, mm. yeah. So by focusing. Well, this is, this is kind of what, I yeah. guess number one is really believing that you are in control 100% of your state and that yes. you have the ability and the, the controls of, of, of completely shifting it. Yeah. And uh, I think we, you and I compared it to having a weed in the garden, uh, King, you know, that yep. Yep. the grass is actually a weed. And, yep. and a weed is something that you don't want in the ground. Yeah. Um, and if you, that's why people pack grass uh-huh. seed every that's what we reseed every year because we want the grass to be so thick that there's no room for yeah. any of the weeds that we don't want yeah. right yeah so in a sense i think it would be brilliant to do the same thing in our minds is just yep. pack yep. it with all those thoughts exactly. that you really want so there's no room for the things that you don't want to breathe exactly that is exactly what we do we focus our thoughts and by focusing our thoughts or packing the seeds as you say into that soil we actually form beliefs because beliefs are just thoughts that are practiced over and over and over to the point where they become Mm -hmm. knowledge. It's just like, you know, it's going to be this way. It's not a question anymore. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we do. by. I love that. Yeah. 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 That was, that's just brilliant. Well, you know, we're, our, our time has come to an end King. This is, these are incredible little lessons. And I think what we've taken away today is um, absolutely fantastic. I certainly feel like energized, and you know ready to go um for my day and i can't wait for my daughter to come home so i can you know sit down with her and have that conversation um and it leads us to you know what we're going to be talking about next time we're going to be uh discussing guilt and we're going to be discussing worry and why we worry and the guilt weapon uh so these are really exciting um recordings that we're going to have coming up and they fit so nicely with this you know this topic as well so um I'm, 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 I want to thank the audience for listening to us today and uh, to you, King, for your, your wonderful teachings that make such a difference um, in my life. And I just know they're making a difference right now in people's lives. Mm. And um, I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Dan. I so appreciate the whole experience. And I'm happy that we're able to share this with many other people. Thank you very, very much. So have a wonderful day and I will see all of you guys very soon. Eternal love and infinite peace.